Hi everybody, thanks for joining me again. In this video, I want to cover collision detection. Uh, this gets a little interesting. There aren't many changes, but the collision detection, at least for me, when I was first doing it, uh, is a little bit challenging to do. So we're going to do some simple collision detection in this one. Uh, nothing too complicated, uh, but I'm going to walk through it just so you can just so you can see how it works. Uh, the, the function here, we'll just see collision. I've already added it. Okay, it's right here. Uh, so I want to walk you through it step by step just so you can get your head around it because the code does look a little busy. It's a little hard to grok just at, at, a, mo at, at a glance, right? So let's, uh, let's take a look at this. So uh, what I'm passing in here are four integers. Uh, they are all i32s. So with Odin, you can just string the parameters together with a comma and then use a colon at the end to, um, to state what type they are. And, uh, you know, I could just pass in two rects, the SDL rects, which is really um, what we need right here is we're, we're comparing two rects, but I would rather just pass in the four points. Now, what are we passing in? We're passing in the X and the Y, as well as the width and the height for each of the rectangles. And we are using those four points to, to see if there is an overlap. So this might be easy for you. Uh, for me, it just uh, took me a bit to get my head around it. So uh, I prepared a little screen here. We're going to draw this out and help wrap our, hopefully it'll help wrap our heads around it. Here we go. So I'll just zoom out a little bit here. Okay, so what we're doing is we have two rectangles. And let's say they overlap like this. Um, maybe this next one, I'll change the color. Can I do that? Yes, I can do two different colors. Okay. So uh, if you take a look at the function here, we're comparing two values. So there's uh, two, two things should be true. So something and something else. The first section is this one right here. We're taking a max and a min. Uh, the min part. So we're taking, uh, let's say this is one and this is two. The red is one, the black is two x1 would be the topmost left corner and then plus the width so we're taking a look at this right side right here so just focus on that let me see if i can kind of make a little there we go just kind of highlight it a little bit for you so we're looking at the rightmost side which is x1 plus w1 and then we're looking at x2 plus w2 which would be the rightmost side here and we're grabbing the min so which one is most to the left, which one is less? And that would be this one on the, the red triangle, the red rectangle, sorry. So we're taking this one, and then we're looking at the max between x1 and x2, which would just be these top left corners right here. So which one is the max? That would be this one. So the first statement checks to see, is this greater than that point right there? Is the x coordinate right there so let's say it's 10, is it greater than the 5 right there? If that's true, then our first condition passes. Then we look at the next one. We look at y. We'll start with the min again. So min y1 plus h1. So the y1 would be this topmost corner, plus the height, which would bring us down to here. And then we do the same with the next rectangle. 2, y2 plus y height, y2 height. So we are asking which one is the minimum between this bottommost uh, y value and this bottommost y value. Which one is least? Which one is minimum? And that would be this one right here. So just like we compared these two x, the right sides, and we chose the minimum, we're looking at these two white, uh, y sides, and we're grabbing the minimum. And then we grab the maximum between y1, which was here again along this top and y2 so we're asking is this greater than the max between those other two which would be this one and that's true this is greater than this because when you go down on the y-axis our number increases so it is true that this is greater than that we checked on our, our x side here on the left and it is also true that this y is greater than this y Therefore, there is an overlap. And so we return true that there is a collision. So that's basically it. Um, you might have to rewind that part and go through a few more times 
I know I had to go through that several times to wrap my head around it, but that would return true for a collision. So we're going to use this to detect whether or not our the lasers that we're firing are colliding with the drones. So let's go up to our render, render and update section right here. Uh, first things first, drones, here we go. So we go through our drones and uh, let's see, no, that's not it. Oh, I know why now. I have master checked out. So we don't want to start with master. We want to, uh, let's see. Let's copy collision here. I'm going to want to use that again. Get check out main. So just reset all that. So to work along with me, you'll want to check out part of six i believe where we yes where we're spawning drones okay there we go so that'll start you off where uh, we left off with the last video i'll re-add our collision detection I like to cheat a little bit to save some time and here we go update and render so where we last left off we were implementing uh, variable speeds for our drones and when we were iterating through our drones, kind of in one, one loop, we were checking the cooldown to respawn. And then we were uh, resetting the position based on, you know, the number of steps, uh, our delta motion. And then we were rendering right here. We will rip this out because we won't render until we know for sure that uh, a laser hasn't collided with the drone and destroying it. So this loop will be our uh, respawn loop. And when we do respawn, we'll break. We'll just, we'll, um, we'll respawn one drone at a time, one frame, so that they don't come too quickly. Uh, that's in addition to our cooldown, of course. So there's our respawn. Uh, we have our lasers fired. And actually, we won't render our lasers either unless, um, unless they haven't collided with a drone. So we have to move that down here. See, that all these little things that took me a while to, to figure, and I still don't know if this is the best way. This worked for me, where uh, based on the previous frame's positioning, I check all my collisions and, and state to see if a laser has been has destroyed a drone, and therefore it should disappear as well. These are all the things that I check before I change to the next position and then re-render again. So we'll put our lasers down here. And remember, we're only at, uh, rendering our lasers if the x is if it's all the way to uh to the right uh, sorry if it's not all the way to the right if it's still on the screen that's when we render it so what happens when we collide well we'll do a couple of things one we'll change the drone's position to being far off on the left so you know it's it's dead uh and this is again where i thought better of it later on and i should have implemented health again and actually maybe i'll do that this time we'll re-implement health because that makes things a little bit easier uh, entity health said that was an int before let's let's do that so our drones our health would be zero so that meaning it should not be rendered yet and let's see lasers let's try let's do that as well and the player i mean it can be health zero we're not really doing anything with it just yet we're not we're not uh firing back with our drones yet that's in a later video so where did we leave off we're respawning our drones we are firing our lasers now let's check if our current laser positions hit a drone so to do this uh, i mean we could do it a couple of different ways you could just go through all your lasers which is what i chose to do we'll go through all our lasers in okay. lasers and we'll check for a collision so first of all if the laser is if the health let's say is uh is zero then we just won't bother checking it because obviously it's not on the screen it won't it won't collide with anything so we'll just skip that laser the health is zero so we'll skip it uh, and then here we will detect um, a collision 
this will be a loop because we have to check that laser to see if it's connecting with any of the drones that are on the screen. So we'll make a new loop here. Game drones. And if the drone, actually, if the drone's health is uh, zero, then we'll continue again. We won't bother checking because that means the drone has been destroyed or it's off the screen. We won't, uh, we won't bother checking against that. And here we can check for a collision. Now we check our two recs, which would be our L our laser, our X and our Y, our width and our height. Let me just make sure. Um, let me make sure I'm checking width and height. Yeah, so I have W width and height next. So that's good. That's what I want to check. And then I check that against our drone. Our drone's X, Y, width, and height. So that will return true if there's a uh, if there's a collision. So if we have a collision, if there's a hit, uh, then we got to do something. We got to uh, kill the drone. So drone health equals zero. And our laser health actually L. Yeah, I should be consistent here. Not not shortening laser, but not shortening drone. Uh, laser. Laser health should be zero. We have to kill both of them. Uh, and we can break our collision detection because, of course, we know that that laser should be gone now. And then once we're done that, uh, we can, you know, assuming, well, I guess what we could do. Uh, let's see. Our lasers were no longer rendering based on width, uh, window width, but health. If it's greater than zero, then we'll render it. So here, any lasers that come into contact with a drone, we, we kill it, we give it a health zero. And when we get to this point, the health will be um, less than one. Sorry, sorry, it'll be, um, it'll be zero, so it won't be rendered. Any of those ones with uh, greater than zero will be rendered. And we start to worry about our drone movement. So our drone movement, I guess we can, we can do it anywhere here, really. Here, I'm going to make this long form as well. Laser and laser, just to be consistent. For drone in game drones. Uh, again, if our drone is alive, that's when we will render it. And that's when we just grab this one. Oops. Oh, yeah. So if our drone health is greater than zero, it's alive. Uh, we render the texture and we render it at its destination. Perfect. Um, but we do need to get the right steps. There, we do have to update the destination, of course, just like that. And we can shorten this, actually. All right, so let's just walk through this, make sure I didn't forget anything. So let's go to the top, where we update our player position. That's fine. We render our player. That's fine. Here we are reloading our lasers. So um, we fire a new laser if we have to. But before we update the positioning of any of the lasers, which is down here, before we actually move it. So right there, we're just reloading, that's all. We're not actually putting anything on the screen just yet. Before we do that, we also spawn our drones. And now that we have our it determined you know which new drones are on the screen which new lasers should be on the screen before they are moved we go through all of our lasers again I check if the laser is health is zero and actually that just reminds me see it helps to talk through this it, it at least it helps me um decide if uh if i've missed anything so firing our laser means uh 
We're not checking now if where its position is to determine if we should revive it. Let's change this to laser again. We're checking our health. If the health is zero, then that means it's it's dead. It should be available for, for firing again. So laser, laser, there we go. Uh, and now we should change our laser health to one. There, that is what which, uh, makes it alive again. That's what makes it available again. We change its health to one. Okay, good. So I, talking through that helped me realize that. Same thing with the drone. Here we're checking if the drone is less than zero. So it's moved from the right all the way to the left. That's not exactly the case anymore. We want to know if the drone's health is zero. If the drone's health is zero, that means it's not on screen or it's been destroyed. It should be respawned. And to respawn it means we reset the health to one. Perfect. I mean, we're still resetting the destination, of course, the X coordinates and all that. But the health is where we determine whether or not it's alive or dead. And then we respawn. Okay, perfect. So if our health, if for the laser is zero, then we just continue because that means it's off screen or it's been used, right, in some way. Then we go through for that laser that's still alive, because we passed this check up above, we check every drone to see if that laser collides with that drone, uh, skipping any drone that is not alive at the moment. So if there's a hit, that means that the drone should die and the laser should die. And then we break out of our loop because that laser, which we're checking right now, against the drones is no longer available to shoot other drones, you see? So we break out of this loop right here and that goes to the next laser and we check. Now we won't, because we've set drone health to zero if a hit, then that means that this drone won't be uh, checked for other lasers as well. It won't, um, it won't be available for other lasers to shoot, you see? And then after we've checked all collisions, we go through all of our drones again, and any drone that's alive, we move it and we render it. And same thing with lasers. Any laser that's alive, we move it and we render it. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we've missed anything. Load and run. And it works the first time, perfect. So let's try sh shooting one. And there we go. Oh, you can see a bunch of them disappeared that I didn't actually shoot. So obviously my collision's off. That's funny. Look at that, I shoot way up here. Yeah, and he just disappears. So that's not good. That actually took me about 20 minutes to figure out what was wrong. I didn't want to record the whole thing and bore you guys with that. Um, but after a lot of uh, writing things down on paper, uh, printing out to the console, the actual coordinates of um, of my laser and the drone when when there was a hit calculated and, and doing it all by hand, I realized that my mistake was right here. Uh, I passed in, instead of the height, I passed in the Y coordinate again. So I knew there was a problem with the Y because the X seemed to be doing okay. Anyway, so that shouldn't be a Y coordinate right there. That should be the height. Um, and maybe even separating it out like that would have been better to help me see that. Anyway, uh, so with that fixed, um, it works as expected. So let's see. So now we're, I'm shooting all the way above these drones and they're not, they're not colliding unless I actually hit it. Okay. So that's good. That's what I expect. Oh yeah. You can see on the screen there, this is how I was actually, um, printing this out and manually verifying the, the, uh, the collision boxes. Uh, we'll get rid of that. Here we go. Okay, so there's actually a few things we can do to tighten this up uh, even more. Instead of going through all the drones or all the lasers right here again at the end, because we're already iterating through the lasers here, if they don't collide, I can just go ahead and move it and render it. So that was that's one less iteration I have to worry about. Uh, not so with the drones, because of course we want to check every drone for every laser, or at least the drones that are alive at the time. Uh, so now that I've deleted that, recompile and make sure it's working yeah so they only disappear when i when a bullet hits them or when a laser hits them that's perfect and now we're finished for this video thanks for watching cheers